But then is there a way that you can come up with a way to standardize non-standard errors? Or are they already too derivative that it's impossible to get everyone on the same page? This is a great question. So the whole material is new to me and to many others, and I'm still trying to get my head around it, but it's worth thinking about these things. We ran that experiment. We had 164 teams the world over, high quality teams, because a third of the teams had people published the very top for example, many, many full professors and associate professors on board, people working in this area. And we gave them a data set that nobody's ever seen and, and nobody might ever get to see, which is 720 million trade records in uh, Eurostox 50 index futures spanning 2002 to 2018. And for all of these records, you get to see who traded. And so you get somebody taking the long side and the short side, but for both those sides to the trade, you get to see if it was an exchange member trading for their own pocket or, or for a client. So you really get at this notion of how much was intermediated versus done for clients. If you talk about realized bid-ask spreads, you can decompose them into what was the realized bid-ask spread for clearing members and what was it for clients? And so they might be separate trends. Now to your question, let's take market efficiency. People measured it. And I brought two slides with me today. I'm trying to minimize slides because I, I think they're distractive. But the, these slides are sort of the core of the entire study. The first slide shows you for six research questions, researchers call them hypotheses, what the outcomes were across the 164 research teams who independently did that study. And people are all over the place in terms of market efficiency. Uh, most conclude that it declined actually over the entire two decades, which is the leftmost column here. So that's research team hypothesis one, uh, efficiency. And this is the annual percentage numbers. So the median here, so these are box plots. So the boxes, they span 25% to 75%. And in the middle of the box is a horizontal line. That's the median. You know, the median was minus 1% per annum uh, decline in market efficiency. And that's already sort of surprising with all that's changed. But what's more surprising is this huge dispersion where the interquartile range is somewhere between plus a few percentage points to minus 10%. Now, your question is, is there a way to standardize? Could we sort of converge on a number that's more of a consensus number? And the way this works in academia, to some extent, I believe, outside of academia, is we get to see each other's outcomes and discuss them in conferences, the water cooler, in the bar, etc. And then when you walk away from such a presentation, if I sit in a train back home or fly back home, what's going through my mind is all these questions people asked and suggestions they did. And I believe that some of these suggestions are actually better than what I did, or at least as good. And I'm thinking, out of all these suggestions, I might want to implement a few of them and improve my study. And this is what we emulated in this experiment. So not only did all of these teams do this, they did this in the first stage. The second stage, they got feedback from senior colleagues who read their reports, assessed their methodologies, and gave them constructive feedback. They did not have to implement it because they were co-author of the study no matter what. But if they believe they're reasonable, they could implement a re-report the estimate for market efficiency, for example, in the first hypothesis. And then we published in the third, you know, one of the top rated papers out of the 164 and showed them to everyone without showing the names. And in the final stage, they didn't have to code anything. They could just pick a number that they ultimately, with all the information they had, was the truth on what market efficiency, in their view, the best estimator of market efficiency age. Now, is there a way to standardize non-standard error? What we saw is tremendous decline in the dispersion, like up to 50%, 50% across all of these stages. So all of this communication does get us to agree on a smaller range of outcomes. But what's interesting is we don't get to a single point. So there is a persistent range, which I believe we should take account of. And the report, depending on which angle point you take, which viewpoint you take, you're going to end up, I'm just making this up now, maybe you end up like minus a half percent and minus five percent of market efficiency after all the review stages, all the peer feedback stages. Well, that, that's important to know. So I truly believe that the outcome on all of these questions that research is the range rather than a single number.